In this tutorial for LabVIEW for LEGO Mindstorms, we'll be working with numbers. We'll be looking at different types of numeric data, also known as representations. We'll also be looking at an important idea in LabVIEW called polymorphism and the related ideas of coercion and conversion, and in particular, Boolean to numeric conversion. Let's have a look at the data coming out of these four sensor blocks. So if I create indicators here, it'll be quite easy to see that there are some differences in the kinds of data coming out of each of these. So you can see here from the touch sensor set to pressed, we're either getting a true or false coming out. Either it's pressed or it isn't. That's a boolean and you'll notice it's got a green wire. If we set the touch sensor to count, then we get a blue wire and that's because blue wire indicates a number uh, and the particular kind of number we've got here is I16. We'll have a look at what that means in a moment. The timer, we get something slightly different. It's still a blue wire, it's still a number coming out, but we've got a U32 and the Celsius is coming out with an orange wire and we've got DBL which is short for double. Now the big difference between the value coming out of the temperature sensor as compared to the count or the timer is the temperature sensor can be reading a value that's not a whole number. Here's a more comprehensive summary of all the common sensor blocks and the types of data that come out of each one. You'll notice that I16 is the most common. Let's have a look at what that means. Here's a table of the numeric data types that you're most likely to encounter when working with NXT. Now strictly speaking Boolean isn't a numeric value but I'm including it here for comparison. The two main differences between these data types are how many bits are used to store the number and the range of data values that they can represent. So for example Boolean with only one bit doesn't take up very much memory but it can only give us a true or false value. I16 with 16 bits can give us a value from negative 32,000 up to positive 32,000 so that's more than enough for most of the NXT sensors. So for example the light sensor is only giving us a value from 0 up to 100 and the motor powers um, we want a number from negative 100 up to a positive 100. The rotation sensor is going to go up a little bit higher. But if we want a bigger number, we need more bits. So we go to either an I32 or a U32. So that's going to give us in the order of 4 billion as a range of values. Now if we use one of those bits to indicate the sign, we can go from a negative nearly 2 billion or a bit more than 2 billion up to positive 2 billion and if we don't use a bit for the sign um, we can go from 0 up to positive 4 billion. Where we might want to use the U32 would be on a timer uh, that's going up in milliseconds so if we'd used the I16 we'd only get up to about 32 seconds which isn't going to be much good whereas going up to about 4 billion uh, on my quick calculations is going to uh, give us more than a year. Uh, which would be pretty good and we're not going to be timing in the negative values so we can use a U32 for that rather than an I32. Uh, for something like the temperature sensor where we want positive and negative values and we don't want to just have whole numbers we need something like this double which is a double precision floating point 64 bits uh, so it gives us a huge amount of accuracy we can go up to a very positive very large positive number or a very large negative number and we can also have very small positive and negative numbers as well. I'd now like to talk about an idea called polymorphism which is a pretty cool idea in LabVIEW and it's how the blocks in LabVIEW are able to adapt to different data types. So for example the rotation sensor uh, outputs an I32 whereas the sound sensor outputs an I16 but we can wire either of these into a motor block and the only difference that we can see is this little red dot here and that's indicating some coercion has taken place and that's because the motor block is expecting an I32 well I16 is similar enough to an I32 so LabVIEW automatically modifies that value coming in and converts it into an I32 and it puts that red dot on there to show us that it's happened. Uh, if you don't like the red dot you can go in here and we can insert from the numeric palette and then conversion sub palette 
and we find the appropriate conversion in this case we want to convert to an I32 and you'll see the red dot disappears for most purposes though with the NXT we can leave the coercion dots there here's one last example and this is of how you can convert a boolean into a number and why that might be useful so let's say we've got a fan uh, set up and we want the fan to be turned on and go at a speed proportional to the temperature but only if we've pressed the button so we could of course use a case structure but another option is actually to use a multiplication and we're going to multiply the temperature by the boolean now we can treat the boolean as a number if we treat no as zero and yes is one and if we go into the numeric palette and under conversion we can select this one boolean to zero one and by converting that to a number you'll see it comes out as a blue wire because it's a whole number zero or a one so we'll end up with a conversion dot here and we also end up with a conversion dot here because we're taking a floating point into a motor um, but this will still work so we'll get uh, the behavior being that if the touch sensor is not pushed in a zero will be fed out of here and zero multiplied by the whatever the temperature is will result in the motor power being set to zero so it won't turn on uh, however if the touch sensor is pressed in then this value will equal one and one times the temperature and whatever the temperature is that will be fed in as the motor power